this is my uh, miniature pot belly stove that I have installed in my uh, 25 foot long Bluebird bus. I bought this stove at an estate sale. It was just a, a decorative item for somebody. I uh, cleaned it up, repainted it, and now it heats my uh, bus on the cold nights. Uh, anyway, uh, it's a pretty standard uh, pot belly stove, except it's very small. Um, to give you an idea of how small it is, I'll, uh, it's your standard water bottle. There you go. It's probably uh, 18 inches tall uh, to the, uh, the top of this plate here. And uh, one thing I wanted to show, or a couple of things about this stove I wanted to, to show uh, when it comes to putting it in a bus. Uh, the first thing I did is I took the legs off. Um, uh, these things are made out of cast iron and the legs are screwed on usually with uh, little bolts or whatever, but they're going to rattle loose. You're going down the road and uh, this thing comes falling down, scare the hell out of you, or uh, even worse, later that night a leg fall out from under it and scatter fire on the floor. It would be really exciting for you, so you want to uh, bolt it down. It's got, uh, it had six holes in it that held the... Uh, metal plate up uh, from the bottom that kept the ashes from falling on the floor of the house that it was in. Well, that's gone. It's now sitting on this uh, transmission drip pan that you can get from an auto parts door for about eight bucks. It's cut in half. I use the other half to go along the wall next to the uh, uh, kitchen stove. But anyway, there's uh, six self-tapping screws. They're about two and a half inches long. They barely fit through the hole. They're probably a quarter inch diameter and a three eighths inch hole, uh, head on them. There's six of them, three on each side. Uh, the stove has a, an ash pan that I built out of an old beer cooler that was thrown away. It was probably from the 1960s or something like that. But anyway, I, I took it apart and I uh, shortened it up, riveted it back together. It was about a foot too long. As you can see there, I cut it and riveted it back together. And uh, those are actually real ashes. <laughs> I guess I should have cleaned it out before I try to make the video. But anyway, and uh, that goes in there. And uh, this goes back on there like that. Anyway, uh, underneath the, the wheel well, on the, or right behind the wheel well, rather, there's a, some unused space that I keep firewood in. In the wintertime, I, I keep that thing loaded up with some good, long, full-size pieces of wood. And uh, for those cold winter nights. And uh, I just gather wood on the side of the road. If I'm in the mountains, I pick up some pine cones, some pine needles, and whatever sticks I can find. And I, uh, I have a bucket right there that I uh, gather it up with. And uh, that's my night's supply of wood. If that runs out, then I uh, go to the emergency stash that's down here. But I try not to use that. Middle of summer, so this is all empty and that's full of paper and junk right now. There's a little shovel in there that I rarely use. Uh, anyway, getting back to the stove, let me get rid of the water bottle. Um, one thing about the stove, if you're going to be going down the road, you're going to want to get a dishcloth or a rag or something like that and put it underneath this lid because that will drive you nuts. Okay, that's number one. Uh, number two, and this is just a temporary solution, but this is rock board. This is flame-proof concrete board. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that to the same height as the stem wall here. And I'm going to put spacers behind it. And I'm going to space it up from the floor approximately an inch, maybe two inches at the most. And I'm going to install a fan in it. And it will draw air in and around and up behind it, which will not only cool it, but it will help radiate more heat into the bus. Anyway, uh, moving on up, the stove pipe, obviously. Four and a half inch, I think. Uh, I think that's what it was. I had to buy this off the internet. I can't remember where I ordered it from. It's been a number of years, but without this, uh, it's hard to control the, the rate of your fire, even if you're careful. Uh, there's going to be times where you're going to want this. And this will actually make the pipe radiate a hell of a lot more heat because you've got about a foot, foot and a half of pipe here that uh, is going to be full of hot gas and burning smoke and whatnot. So instead of having that just shooting right outside, you want to slow it down and uh, have it radiate more heat. All right, moving on up, the top here is where it gets really uh, uh, redneck. But this is a coffee can 
that I cut so the pipe will pass straight up through it and on up through to the top of the bus or above the roof of the bus. But this is filled with perlite. There's about an inch gap uh, between the, the pipe and the, and the can. And it's filled with perlite, which is a, a material that's fireproof and it's an insulator and it's used in gardening. You can buy it cheap, big bags of it at Home Depot for five bucks. And uh, this can be blazing hot, and this will be almost, no, it isn't cool to the touch, but you can hold on to it, so that tells you it's not going to burn your bus down. Uh, this is passed through the roof, and uh, I cut it. Obviously, the roof is not a straight shot. It's a radius. So this is an oval, and it was rather difficult to cut because this metal is thick. They make this bus out of some really good stuff. So I had to really work at this to get this that tight. And it goes on through up to the top or above the roof line and there's a uh, weatherproofed butyl rubber silicone kind of thing that's up there with a storm collar around that and a rain cap and a pass through and all that on top of the chimney pipe so it doesn't leak. In other words it's not a, a small pipe like this up there it's a six inch with a, probably an eight inch cap on it so it's uh, a heck of a lot bigger than this but anyway the people outside don't know that there's a small pipe in here so it doesn't really matter and I'm gonna box this in um, basically I'm in prototype mode here this bus I've been using it for a couple of years uh, going around the southwest I think I put about 10,000 miles on it so far but I'm still working on it and uh, <laughs> figuring things out as I go uh, I've lived off grid for 21 years so I know a little bit about uh, getting it done without using a lot of electricity or gas or any of the other stuff but when I pull over I don't want to have to plug in I don't want to listen to a generator and I don't want to burn a ton of propane because that's expensive and wasteful so uh, the wood stove and a, a bed warmer that plugs into 12 volts does just fine uh, the, the bus is equipped with a, a DC electric refrigerator that is uh, kept going by solar that's on the roof uh, when I'm going down the road, I can uh, charge the battery uh, by the engine, of course. But at, uh, when you're sitting on the side of the road or out in the middle of nowhere for three or four days, you don't have to mess with the generator if you can avoid it. So uh, that's what the solar's for. And uh, anyway, this is my little stove, and it's kept me warm on many a night. And it doesn't take a heck of a lot of wood. And uh, it's doing a pretty good job for what I've got in it. Anyway, I appreciate you watching and hopefully you like the video.